7800X3D reviews are out and it's launching in Wowzers. Also the RTX 4070 ah, and the 4090. No longer top dog, piece of crap. Sorry, I have to admit it to you. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday. April 6th, I was gonna say May 6th, 2023, we're gonna talk about all the hottest tech news. But before we do that, I need to let you know that we're actually live streaming right now our trip to Micro Center to actually pick up the 7800X 3D. So come join us, we're giving away a PC, and if you watch the stream over on Twitch, you can enter into the giveaway, it's pretty easy peasy. So that's important, but I'm going to pick up the chip that we got the reviews for, and it turns out that it's incredible. Despite the fact that AMD themselves only wants to say that it's slightly behind the 7950X 3D in gaming, it turns out that that's just based on how they benchmark things and from what I can gather from all of the reviews that I've seen because the reviews did come out from a lot of different publications. We'll have a link in the video description for you to check out video cards list of all of the people who got a 7800X 3D to review and from what I can gather it is an incredible chip in gaming performance honestly probably beats the 7950X 3D in reality because you don't have to do core parking and one of the major things that's coming out in the reviews is that this thing is super efficient. It is is just, it's mind boggling how much power you're getting for the actual amount of juice it's sucking from the wall. And it's the cheapest way, at least according to Ars Technica, to get the most out of a $1,500 GPU. It really is just the gaming chip to buy if you go watch all of the reviews. But one of the things I want to point out in Ars Technica's review is the 7800X 3D sucks 66 watts of power in Borderlands 3 at 1080p, which is less than the 5800X 3D by about 14 watts. And it got better performance and that's 66 watts puts it at roughly the Ryzen 7700 at max TDP. This is efficient chip level power consumption for maximum gaming level performance. It's beating out the 13900K in a lot of games, it's beating out the 7950X3D in a lot of games, and it's coming in at a price point of $450. It really does look like this is shaking up the industry. AMD has released yet another chip that likely will just live in your system for years to come. Um, I'm actually really excited that it's coming out so early in the AM5 generation. A lot of people had to wait until the 5800X 3D came out for AMD to be on top when it came to the gaming chip with AM4, but now we're starting off early. People can pick up the 7800X 3D and have that last for years. It's a good move. I like to see it, and I'm gonna like to see it even more in person, which is all thanks to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Micro Center. It's the top store for me to get any of my computer goods. And they're actually gonna be opening their first new store in eight years in Indianapolis later this year. They currently have 25 locations nationwide, Indianapolis coming this summer, and then they're also also gonna have two more by 2025. And then by signing up and visiting the Indianapolis store, you can get a 128 gig flash drive for free. But Micro Center also has other great deals like their month long sale on Apple products. For the entire month of April, you can check out Micro Center's prices on Apple laptops and different customizations that you can't get in other stores. You can get deals like $200 off MSRP on the MacBook Pro 16 inch all month long. But also with the launch of the 7800X 3D, if it's your first time being a customer at a Micro Center, you can get $25 off any Intel or AMD CPU, limit one per customer, in store only, but that coupon does apply to the brand new CPU that's launching today. But Micro Center does have it all if you're a tech enthusiast, a 3D printing and maker section, a build your own department, in case you want to spec out your own PC and potentially even have their associates build it for you for a small fee. Using their online PC builder, you'll know that your parts are compatible and you can get same day pro assembly. But I always love working with Micro Center, going to Micro Center because they have incredible prices on tons of different products, including the Apple products, but also PC product sales as well. They have a knowledgeable staff. Again, 25 stores in the US, more coming soon, Indianapolis this summer. They have a huge variety, 30,000 items in stock, and you can check them out at the link in the video description. Whether it's for the first time customer CPU coupon or the Apple sales that they have, or just to window browse, check out Micro Center at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video. So come join us on the stream for Micro Center. We'd love to have you there, but it turns out that love was not had between Google and the head of Stadia because the head of Stadia is gone. Phil Harrison, the person who promoted Stadia, who said it was the future of games, left the company allegedly in January, according to reports. Now just updated to his LinkedIn. No idea where he's going to go, but he was the vice president of Google. Got assigned to this department. It got canned. Didn't actually perform well. And it's kind of sad to see that this happened because I did legitimately like Stadia to some extent. I wish it could have been better. And that's what a lot of people wanted out of Intel's 11th gen 
gen cpus at least in the mobile sector tiger lake getting discontinued as well in january 2024 these lists of cpus are no longer going to be sold and you'll just have to deal with that you'll have to live on 12th and 13th gen Sorry, but you know what we're not gonna discontinue? UFD deals, because Reese has the hottest tech deals for you right now. Yo, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It's a special nighttime version of this. We don't do this often. I'm traveling really early tomorrow morning, but I couldn't leave you guys hanging because our friends and channel sponsors, Micro Center, have some deals for you. Starting with this 32 gig kit of G-Skill Ripjaw 5 DDR4 RAM, running at 3200 megahertz at CL16, going for only $74.99, which is $137 off. And then next we have this 43 inch Samsung 4K Smart TV, which you can pick up for only $249.99, which is $150 off. Honestly, be cool, rock this on your desk, and I can live vicariously through you because I can't do that small desk gang. But then something that's a little bit more my size is this 11 inch Apple iPad Pro. This 2021 edition features the M1 chip and 512 gigs of storage, which you can pick up for only $869.99, which is $180 off thanks to their Apple savings event. But be sure to check out Micro Center's website for more deals. Until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brad for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thanks, Reese. But what looks to be the biggest deal of them all is that Ram is coming out with their electric truck sometime soon and they're releasing more details and it turns out it's gonna have the highest range out of any electric truck announced thus far with a 229 kilowatt hour battery being the top one and it's going to be over 500 miles of range the 168 kilowatt hour standard version is going to get 350 miles of range which is also incredible it looks like ram is taking this ev transition seriously on top of the fact that they're going to have a whole lot of truck features to be in the 1500 rev 2700 pounds of payload capacity 14,000 pounds towing capacity and it's also going to have up to 350 50 kilowatt DC fast charging, and it's gonna offer bi-directional charging for up to 7.2 kilowatts of power delivery, which is rivaling what you can get with the F-150 Lightning. It does look like the 1500 Rev is gonna be good. I wanna see this in person. I wanna see more of this truck. It really is cool to see a brand that is known for like American muscle and America's love of coal and oil is being transitioned to EVs. I can't, I can't wait to get more of it. I'm really surprised at how much they're, the specs are lining up with what I wanna see out of them. And the specs, on the RTX 4070 are lining up with benchmarks that are finally coming out. Turns out in an OpenCL benchmark that we're getting out now, it's about where you would expect it to come in. It's roughly 20% slower than the RTX 4070 Ti, which was originally supposed to be a 4080, mind you. And that puts it in the realm of being an RTX 3080 in generalized performance. Now, likely in gaming performance is probably gonna go toe to toe with the RTX 3080, except in places where memory bandwidth is gonna be important because the RTX 4070 is gonna have less memory bandwidth than the RTX. 3080, but it does have more VRAM than the RTX 3070 Ti, so it could potentially do better than that. Additionally, because of this benchmark, we have more details on the actual specs that are going to be in the 4070. It looks like it's going to have the exact same amount of CUDA cores, so no increase there. It's just going to be IPC improvements and power efficiency improvements and all of the things that NVIDIA's tweaked to be in the RTX 40 series. And then on top of that, we are expecting it to only have a TGP of 200 watts, which is 20 watts less than the 3070, 90 watts less than the 3070 Ti, and it looks like you're getting 3080 level performance for much lower power consumption, which is something we were praising AMD for with the 7800X 3D. If the 4070 is delivering that here, uh, 599 is a tough pill to swallow, but it does look like it's uh, it's at least a marginal improvement all around. Let me know, do these numbers help to incentivize you to want to pick up the 4070 allegedly next week, at least according to the reports from video cards? Let us know down below in the comments. But what's not alleged, what's not a report, is the official numbers coming out from NVIDIA themselves on the update that's coming to Cyberpunk 2077. In case you haven't been paying attention, RT Overdrive is the next wave of ray tracing that NVIDIA is trying to put into video games. So this is actual path tracing. This is like the legit direct global illumination, everything is 100% ray traced, unlimited ray tracing shadows. NVIDIA is showing it off in this video, but one of the things that they also show off in this video is just the fact that this $1,600 graphics card will not be enough for anything that you're trying to do with them showing that at most, at most, it will get 34 FPS with no deep learning super sampling. If you don't have DLSS 3 turned on, you're getting nothing. You don't enjoy any of this video game whatsoever. And that is because of just how more intense this ray tracing method is versus what has been out there. So this is the way it's currently being done on Cyberpunk's ray tracing ultra mode. And then this is the way that it's going to be done with the RT overdrive mode, which is increasing the amount of power that the GPU has to deliver. Obviously, 
Apparently Nvidia put this out to show that DLSS 3 is necessary with the frame interpolation and increasing the frame rate that way where you turn DLSS 3 on, you get 138 FPS versus 34 in some regions, or when you were driving around 127 FPS versus 16 FPS, which is a huge increase. But obviously there's the whole debate of this being fake frames. It really just goes to show that when Nvidia was envisioning doing ray tracing in video games all the way back when the RTX 2080 launched, they, they had a vision that they could not even accomplish here in 2023 because to enable ray tracing fully is just gonna murder your GPU. This really does seem to be the new benchmark for what a game can handle in terms of graphical and visual fidelity. So I've seen some sites say this is the new, can it run crisis mode? Can it do RT overdrive? Obviously, AMD not gonna participate in getting this DLSS 3 numbers. We'll have to wait until FSR 3 comes out to see what AMD's reaction is with frame interpolation. But for RT overdrive in Cyberpunk 2077, it's gonna be a free update on April 11th for you to try out on your piddly little RTX 4070 that you get two days later, allegedly. Or your 4070 Ti. I'm really curious to see what like an RTX 4060 is gonna be able to do here. Nothing, probably. I wanna see it crush my GPU. And you're gonna see me crush this edit of hot news because I'm the one who's editing it because our editor had to go on vacation for a little bit. And now I'm I'm doing all of it. You Hopefully you noticed just a little bit that it was slightly worse and not tremendously worse. I'll see you tomorrow, friends. As we finally get to share Google's vision for the future of games.